In 2008, a man was hitchhiking through a remote part of the Mojave Desert. After a long day under an impossibly hot sun, he was glad to see a pickup truck come along. In it, two women. They offered to take him back to their cabin. Was this the beginning of every man's erotic fantasy or a satanic nightmare about to begin? Historians will tell you the three of the world's biggest religions all came out of the desert. And they all share the same common enemy, the devil, Beelzebub, the Lord of the Flies. And while some people fear him, some people worship him, and others use it as an excuse to do the most appalling crimes. In 2008, a man named Antonio Sabato decided to hitchhike through the Mojave Desert down to the town of Baker in Southern California. After a long time under a hot sun, he was happy to see a pickup truck come along in which two women offered to give him a ride. They said they'd take him back to the small ramshackle cabin they inhabited, feed him, and then take him down to the highway later in the evening. True to their word, they gave him a plate of pork and beans, and after two bites, Antonio passed out. When he awoke, the young man found himself by a fire, his hands tied securely in front of him, and a pentagram drawn on the ground about him, in which a group of people, naked as the day they were born, converted and engaged in sexual acts in what could only be described as a crazed orgy. And in the middle of all this stood a strange hooded figure, a tall man with a painted face and eyes that burned with evil. But it was what the man held in his hand that terrified Antonio the most, a long bloody knife. Motioning to his followers, he had them bring forth a young goat, which he savagely killed, slicing into pieces and throwing the heart and the head at Antonio's feet. He then made a motion for his followers to bring Antonio to him, raising the knife in the air for what surely was going to be the death stroke. But before the man could plunge the knife into Antonio, one of the women who had picked him up fell to the ground, screaming and crying, foaming at the mouth, having some sort of seizure. Taking advantage of the momentary confusion as several of the worshippers rushed to help the woman, Antonio sprung to his feet and ran off into the darkness. The hooded man ordered his worshippers to chase after the young man, but as Antonio still had his work boots on and they were naked, he soon outdistanced him in the desert. Terrified, the young man ran for half the night before coming to a large boulder field where he climbed up into the rocks and took refuge in a cave. While far below him, a faint fire flickering on the far horizon told him whatever remained of the ceremony still went on. In the morning, having used a sharp rock to saw through the ropes around his wrists, the young day laborer headed out into the desert. It was another day and a half before he got down to the interstate and was able to flag down a trucker and get a ride into Los Angeles. He'd had quite enough of the Mojave Desert. And what about the mysterious painted man and his group of followers? Well, no official report's been filed, but rumor has it that a few years ago, a deserted cabin was found out in the wilderness containing four severed human heads. So who knows? Perhaps the cult is still at work. It only remains to be seen if another hitchhiker falls victim. In the end, like so many of these stories, what we have is one man's version of what happened. I don't know about you, but if I ever find myself hitchhiking through the Mojave Desert, I'll be darn sure I check who I get in with. I'm M.L. Behrman. This is Mojave Mysteries.